Right, so it's the Geeky Guys. I'm Dave here, Mr. P is with us as well. Hello. And it's a special episode. And this week we've got, kicking off season four mm. of our Tea Break podcast, we've got Mr. Garrett Wong. Probably Thank best you for pronouncing as, it. Thank uh, you for pronouncing it correctly. Uh, appreciate, uh, that. I appreciate that. Appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, he's probably best known as uh, Ensign Harry Kim on Star Trek Voyager. Um, Amongst many other things, very talented man. And we also have his uh, better other, his better half with his uh, Megan Elise as well. How are we doing, guys? Good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Thanks cool. very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us uh, first off. And so I know Garrett's just uh, literally landed uh, yes. not too long ago, haven't you? So that's, that's right. Uh, that's very nice. We appreciate that, man. We've been managed to arrange this over three time zones. That's that's really good. I know. <laughs> oh yeah. Normally I, I don't know I, what, time, what day of the week is. So yeah, but I, I'm kind of wondering why you guys didn't reach out to me when I was in the UK for the Star Trek convention in November of last year. Then I would have been in the same time zone as you. So well, yeah, well, well, we, were there, there, we were there. We were there. That's the funny thing. We were there. That's the oh, you're at the we con. Well. That's why. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've uh, we've been to most of uh, most of the UK ones, and we're, we're yeah. hoping to get over to to Vegas or New York potentially to do some oh. uh, some Star Trek content. You at haven't some point. you haven't done any US shows? Then, no, no, right? you, no Vegas US. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. I did Vegas in twenty eighteen. Oh, you oh you've oh, been. Okay. Nice. You, did Vegas. Yeah, you just All went right. for the day, didn't you? I did, and it was really it was one of those where it was you go there for the first time you think amazing and brilliant fantastic then all of a sudden everyone like disappeared then there was all this chatter online uh, online what i missed the announcement about picard i wasn't <laughs> in there when oh. you talked about it yeah because it's so funny when, when the entire convention was a ghost town because yeah. they all were in that yeah. one auditorium waiting for the special news <laughs> oh well. right. <laughs> no, no, you hey, completely wait, missed it. Didn't you? You. <laughs> and I, I did berate you, you on that as well, didn't I? On the episode did. we did after that, and I was like, "So, how was it? What did they say?" It was like, I don't know. I wasn't in there. <laughs> I didn't make it into the room. I didn't <laughs> oh, know. No. What were you no, doing? Where were you? I've got a funny photo with the triple. Um, <laughs> you were outside in the hallway oh, with the, the triple. <laughs> it's it's well, positive cool. news. You did it's get good. to uh, meet Kate Mulgrew, didn't you? Oh, yes, good. I, I did get a photo oh. with Kate. Yes. Oh, uh, good, Captain Janeway. Uh, yes. I, I, I ticked. Yeah. I ticked one of the Voyager boxes that day. Yes. Okay, good. So, I, good. I think. Uh, I think my um, meeting with her was probably a little bit funnier, wasn't that? When I said to you, it was when she came to uh, London, mm. and um, we was all queuing up, and she was very nice to everybody, and suddenly mm. there was this one moment. There was this like older lady that had got a, a bit of a limp. I, I don't know what something wrong with her legs somehow and she was struggling along and nobody was helping her and none of the um convention staff are helping her and she's going dead slowly and kate just suddenly goes well wait a second please somebody come and help this lady i'll do it myself <laughs> and she comes across and uh, takes this lady by the hand and takes her to the um to the screen to have the photo oh my god that's fantastic Aww. see that's how kate does it she just yeah. took charge like the so captain cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was so cool. That was. Mm -hmm. So let's jump straight in then and uh, yeah. talk, uh, talk the Voyager because we're going to have to do that, aren't we? I think uh, so. Just a okay. little part of what you've done, Garrett. Sure. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I know you've probably said, told this story many times before, but uh, how, how did you get involved with Voyager to start with in the, uh, in the beginning? Oh, um, yes. I had a. Um... You know, I had a talent agent like most actors do when they're in Los Angeles back in the day. Uh, and they said, OK, you're auditioning for a series regular role on Star Trek Voyager. The character's name is Ensign Harry Kim. He's fresh out of Starfleet Academy. This is his first posting, his first mission. And he's, you know, he's very, he's very green. He's very, he's a novice. He's brand new on the, on the scene. Yeah. And, um, and the audition scene was a scene where Harry and Balana were in the stairwell in the episode Caretaker, and they've both been affected by, by the caretaker, and they have that, that disease that, that, that's on them, and they're, they, you know, they're very weak. And it's that scene yeah. where Harry says, like, I can't believe 
on my very first mission, I'm going to die, you know? So that was my <laughs> audition. That was my audition scene. So, and I had to, I had to show pain and all this stuff and, and be, you know, almost near death, which is not easy for someone who's 20, early twenties to do that because, you know, actors draw, draw upon life experience, uh, upon life experience to be able to portray an actor, uh, authentically. And when you're early twenties, you, you know, you've never really had uh, a near death. At least I had not had a near death experience, nah. really. So <laughs> the big one to drop on you. Yeah. So you know, you've got to do your best job for that. So it's quite interesting, though, is because I I read on uh, some research online. Um, there was something to do with when you went in for the point of Harry Kim that you had mm. to read a Star Trek TNG script, Code no. of Honor, or something. I don't know if that's no, not that right. Is Correct. No, uh, oh, and he's no. editing and deleting them. <laughs> no, that was um, that was you watching TNG. And yeah, it that was me. Court of Honor. Yeah. So what it was was that story. You're you're kind of mixing up a couple of stories. This, the the story uh, about Code of Honor was the uh, when I <clears throat> when I got the role of Harry, I was very, um, uh, you know, I was paying attention to my preparation. I was trying to prepare yeah. the best that I could. And I, I thought about all the minute details of preparation to be a Starfleet officer. And one of them is pushing buttons. So yeah. I said, I said to, um, I, I, I called up the, uh, the guy that was assisting Rick Berman. Um, and I said, Dave, Dave Rossi is his name. I said, Dave, I need some tapes of TNG episodes so I can watch how they push buttons. And he yeah. says, what? You haven't seen TNG? And I told him, I said, yes, I have seen TNG, but it was when I was in college at university. It came on the air in 1987. <laughs> and I said the episode that came on that I saw was in the middle of, the, of season one or, or yeah. the beginning of season one. And it was Code of Honor. And I said, it was the worst episode I've ever seen of any Star Trek, of any <laughs> sci-fi. It was horrible. And then, and I said, okay, I'm still an open-minded person. I'm going to give it another chance. And six months later, I turned on T uh, TNG to watch it again. It was a rerun of Code of Honor. And then I said, this is ridiculous. So I didn't watch anything for <laughs> another year and a half. Oh, a year God. and a half later, they're in season three now. I turned on TV, <laughs> on the TV, and it's another rerun of Code of Honor. I said, forget oh, it. I'm not going right. to watch any TNG. So that's how that whole story came about. I uh, see. So yeah, I know a lot. It did take a little while to uh, to get going. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember we had a, a guest on um, end of last year, Larry Nemechek. Yeah, and Larry, Dr. Yeah. Trek himself, uh, he was mm -hmm. telling us that some of the um, early TNG episodes were actually written for Kirk and for the original series crew. Um, oh, really? okay. And so that's why it kind of seemed a little bit like that kind of tone, that kind of theme around the early episodes. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, Very interesting. the whole of the first series of TNG, I think, was regurgitated scripts from phase two, which was going to be another series, but they made it into the motion picture when a little picture from uh, Star Wars yeah. came oh. out before they needed to movie out instead wow. so, yeah that's all right they rejig them yeah um look at that we, we gave you a piece of trivia you didn't know yeah yeah i didn't even <laughs> know. I, I was so worried that you just all of our trivia that we were going to throw but, at you but i will say everything every story i've ever told megan knows megan knows them back oh, God. Or it's upside down she if i was somehow Let's say I was incapacitated in the hospital. I couldn't speak and I had to talk and I was supposed to be on this call. Megan could have come on here as me <laughs> as and you. answered everything. Am I right, oh, Megan? Brother. I mean, yes, I would want to come on as you, but no, but you I you know every story. story you'd be a, the you'd be a good standard. Yes. yes. The yes. exact way that you tell it. I yes. Could. She knows she knows the cadence of how I tell the story. I mean, where where the punchline is, she knows it all. So it's <laughs> Voice yeah. E H H, the emergency Harry Hollibur. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing Megan and Lise, the E H H, the <laughs> Harry Hollibur character. I'm sure there's oh. a series in that. There is. Yeah. There is. <laughs> there is. Uh, That's your new nickname. Look at right? that. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. You've been sure. started right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Megan. Um, no. <laughs> In fact, we saw the interview with you uh, uh, just a, a little while ago, uh, Gary, and you were talking about Lower Decks yeah. yes. uh, and saying you'd really like to voice a character on Lower Decks, a phaser yeah. or anything, you said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, I'll said, i be the phaser. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> the thing is, as soon as you said I'll that, be the 
I could see it. I could see it happening. Could you? Could you? I, I think I think it should be an alien that looks like a phaser that runs around the corridor. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I yes. like a new that. security officer. <laughs> Um, I think the phaser sound instead of the typical sound should be voiceovered with George Decay's oh my every time it shoots out. <laughs> oh my oh my oh I love Lower Decks I'm just a big kid I have to it's, say it, you know what that show it, it truly it's so funny and it's really it's something that a lot of people in you know they make when you first watch it, you're like, eh, I don't know. And then the more you watch it, you're like, yes, I love this. So it just grows mm -hmm. on you. It really it, does. It's, it's a little bit like, yeah. uh, I suppose, Final Space. I don't know if you've ever watched Final Space. Mm, no, I've never Final seen space. that. Megan, have you comedy... heard of that one? What's it called? Final Space? Final Space. It's another comedy animated space show. No, really? Yeah. From the US or from uh, UK? I don't actually know whether it's US or UK. Megan, have you heard of this show, Final Space? I feel like I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen it. I, yeah, it I'm not sure. Of, I'm not sure oh. where the production is from. Where it came oh, from. What, what year did this come out, though? What, what, it's is been this out an a old of years now? Uh, oh, so it's recent then. It's been out, you know, a couple oh. of years, but it's only on. Was it two or three huh. years? Maybe. It's, it's okay. It's, 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 anyway, it's, it's just a funny animated. Yeah, story. yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Animation is a great way to get away with a lot of stuff. Like you could not film live action scenes of some of the there's some really gruesome things that have happened on on lower decks that <laughs> that you yeah, know something you, different if, yeah <laughs> if you were to, graphic right very graphic and you and how difficult would that be to, to film dolphins like you know the two dolphin uh, characters like you're, I, yeah yeah i mean the budget's gonna go through the roof then you know bring a real live two live dolphins train them to do the right thing for the scene i mean i don't know no, I think the Animation. greatest thing about that, about Lower Decks, and obviously with uh, Star Trek Prodigy, yeah, um, that's come out that uh, Kate Mulgrew's come back for. Uh, I think yes. that they're kind of shows that would bring people into Star Trek that are not already fans. Um, yeah. with it being like a more adult anime, um, certainly for Lower Decks, mm -hmm. um, and the younger ones, and then eventually they're going to get as they get older, watch the the other stuff. Yeah. Definitely. So I think it's, I, it's, it's good. Do you, I mean, I, I'm just curious, do you three like Prodigy? Yes or no? Uh, I've not really seen much of it. I mean, over okay. here in the UK, uh, I'm not sure who's who's broadcasting it, who's airing it. So I've only seen sort of the a few just trailers clips. and seen oh, some no. of the interviews with the okay. cast. We do eventually get around to watching it through other means, but we're not going to see right. it. <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. We're going to... Yeah. Um, well, Me yeah. Megan knows those means. Megan <laughs> has talked about those means before. Um, but yeah, we'll get to it. Wait, the clips that we've seen look quite funny. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. get around to seeing it when you get a chance. I know that uh, I know Kate's put a few clips on it, I think, on her Twitter and Thumbs occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know I'm... she did say that was the big thing for her as well, that it was about children and it was aimed to children as to yeah. why it was a big thing in her mind to to come back and and do that side and right. do entertainment for children and passing on a, a positive message yeah and i think that really appealed to her no that's i'm gonna definitely... like it if it's for children i'm gonna like it every time my baby says, no 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 Clark, we're gonna watch this episode because i've not seen it yet <laughs> but it's it's not really i mean yeah it's for kids but not it's not like Barney or you know yeah. Dora the Explorer. It's it's older kids, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think it's really like not young young kids. Vibrant, no, no. no. Um, so here's a but, question: if, if, yeah. if, if Voyager, if they did an animated version of Voyager now, and yeah. they went back and said this, is what happened between this period of time? Is there anything that you think they could do now, or what you'd like to see them do with the show if they could do it animated? And the sky's the limit. Yeah, Is I think they should do it. They should do an animated um, Captain Proton. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, cool. that'd be good. Not an animated Voyager, an animated <laughs> Captain Proton. Captain. Now everyone can do their voices. Yeah. It doesn't matter that 25 years have passed. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Robbie can come in as Captain Proton. Yeah, Kate can be uh, uh, Arachnia again. Yeah. We can bring yeah. in. We can bring in Martin Rayner, the the UK actor that played Chaotica. And of course, yeah. Chaotica dies in Bride of Chaotica, but we could have Chaotica's eviler brother twin brother yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying so there's so many things or, or chaotica's origin story we could have that so uh, there's so many ways to go about that um but i said so talking about that. um other ways of doing voyager did, did you have any inkling during the the run that it was ever going to go the tng way and it was going to go into feature films afterwards so was it always pretty much never mentioned yeah. 
no, we thought that we would get that treatment yeah. as well. But so we now they did the, on Enterprise. Yeah, but then we saw DS9 got nothing. So we were like, uh-oh, mm. this might not happen. And it's always been my opinion, and Megan will be, know exactly <laughs> what I'm about to say, is that um, I feel like the last two TNG movies should have been a TNG, uh, should have been a Voyager movie and a DS9 yeah. movie because they, yeah, were horrible. they were horrible. They were bad. And if you look at all the Trek movies that are out there, uh, Insurrection and uh, what's the other one? Nemesis. Oh Nemesis. Nemesis, yeah. Garbage. I'm sorry. I mean, if you have TNG episodes that are better than your feature film, don't make that feature film. Sorry, no, wrong. That's it. You wasted your time. It should have been a two hour Voyager movie coming home. So uh, uh, the end, end game, the Voyager's final episode is yeah. a two parter. They should have aired yeah. the first half and said to be continued at a theater near you, near you yeah. and shot yeah. a two and a half hour movie, which would have been filmed at the exact same time as, I don't know if it's it's, it's either Nemesis or or the other crappy one, uh, was filmed exactly right at the end of Voyager. So it would have been perfect timing. Um, and I made my thoughts known. I told this to, yeah. to the writers, but of course they looked at me like this stupid young kid that doesn't know any better. Um, Ooh, but dear. when I tell this at convention, all the fans are like, yes, yeah. that That's would it. have That's been what amazing. Have you know how much money they would have made to, to make the cliffhanger? you got to go watch it yeah. at the theaters. This is, yeah. my, it's you know, so good. my thought process wasn't being greedy and, and sort of like, oh, I want a Voyager movie. It was thinking, how can this make the studio money? Yeah. It'll make yeah. money. Would have made everyone, sense and made oh money. Oh my God, everyone would have gone to the theater to watch the ending of Voyager. Come on. So. And it would have been nice to have seen everybody go their separate ways and sort yes. of yes. Ensign Kim yes. finally get his promotion and uh, yes. <laughs> look at what they've been doing in the Delta Quadrant, all the things they've discovered, all the new science, new technology that's coming back. Exactly. Um, from that time. There and was, maybe was, he would have married yeah. Megan Delaney. Yeah, maybe. One of the maybe Delaney one of the Delaney sisters. sisters. Oh yeah. But she yeah, has no time possible. for you. The, the, oh no, it's Jenny that doesn't have time, isn't it? Right? Who no, do it's I like Megan. You like Megan, but she won't give you time. Oh, that's right. She won't give me the time of day. That's right. Yeah. Which is kind of how Megan treats me too. Sometimes she, <laughs> she doesn't give me that time <laughs> oh, <well>. of day. <laughs> oh, just, just talking about obviously um, the off time during your um, yeah. Starfleet years. Um, I wanted to quickly talk about like costumes and, and outfits because obviously sure. we, we see like uh, most of the time you see characters in their Starfleet uniforms for the majority of the time. Right. But in Voyager, we did see quite a lot of off time when you're, you know, relaxing or whatever. Yeah. It's Hold it's holiday like, programs. Yeah. Uh, sure. uh, running around with Captain Pro talking about Holoka or going off yeah. to play, whatever. Um, and so there's been a few different outfits that you've wore when you weren't wearing a Starfleet uniform. Mm -hmm, yeah. I mean, yes, there's a flight suit, of, of course, from, from the Delta Fire. Um, mm -hmm. And it's gone out my head now. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. The white, the white, yeah, yeah, black yeah, yeah. Drive, yeah. Uh, series seven episode drive. Three, yeah, yeah the white drive. with the black jumpsuit. Oh, yeah. so I just wondered, did you have a favorite sort of outfit that wasn't Starfleet gold? Uh, well, I mean, the drive outfit is 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 amazing. I I kept saying, why can't we all have this outfit? Like, <laughs> change change everyone to that outfit. Janeway would have looked good in that. Chakotay would have looked good in that. That everyone would have looked good in that. That yeah, I really enjoyed that that uh, outfit. But um, the Captain Proton outfit was nice; was pretty comfortable um, as well. And any time that I had a chance to wear something that was not Starfleet uniform, I was pretty excited um, because it just you know it, it's every day for seven years you wear the same <laughs> costume. Can you imagine if I just said to you right now, to both of you, I said, look, see what you're wearing right now? You can't change that for seven years. How would you feel? You got, you'd be like, what? Are you and sure? That's how, you don't know what I'm wearing from here down. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to say you have to be... You have to be scantily clad from the from the waist down from now on forever. It's just it's annoying and it's just it's so tiresome when you're wearing. That. And the thing is, if that Starfleet uniform was comfortable, sure, I'd wear it every single day. But it was not comfortable. It was right. very uncomfortable. No. Yeah. And especially if you're a member of the uh, the bridge crew that doesn't get to go off and film on location. Oh, exactly. a lot. You're stuck on the bridge. You don't get yep. to put the nice away jackets on and no. get kitted Her out differently for no. a bit. Yeah, that episode where they went down to... Uh, <clears throat> um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, where they go back down to Earth and Ed Begley Jr. is uh, the uh, Future's CEO. End. Future's End Part 1 and 2, yes. Yeah. So they got to wear 
regular clothes, yeah. you know, and it was Tuvok <laughs> and Ch Paris and Janeway and Chakotay and he Carrie was left on the bridge, so. Yeah, but it's Tuvok's funny line, isn't it, where he says, the captain, we could have used, well, worn our Starfleet uniforms and no one would have noticed. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's so true. <laughs> no one would have noticed. Uh, in Santa so Monica. Uh, I always thought yeah. that line was funny. It was funny. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would like, like to ask you uh, about, I was talking to Mr. Pibai earlier, we never got the... Uh, the um, Garrett Wong directed episode of uh, Voyager no. or any Star yeah. Trek. I know a lot mm -hmm. of them um, directed episodes, obviously Robbie, Roxanne, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Um, so I, just why didn't it happen for you? Because I think it's yeah. something you wanted to do. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth is what happened. So <laughs> right. you know, when, you, when you piss off your superiors, then uh, opportunities close very quickly. And it was yeah. in, it was in, it was inadvertent. I wasn't trying to be a rabble rouser. I wasn't trying to be somebody who, who was trying to make everyone's life miserable. It was uh, it was a interview with TV Guide, and the guy said, "Do you have any criticism to the show?" I said, "Not that I'm going to let you know." Is what I said. <laughs> and he's and he said, um, "Oh no, I'm a big fan. This is off the record. I would never print this." And he printed it. And I said, "What right. I said was." The producer writers of Voyager didn't take the risks that they could have to make the show better than it already is. So right. it's constructive criticism. And yeah. that that what, what I was saying is the risks being allow the human characters to be funny. Don't yeah. allow the yeah. alien Neelix and the holographic doctor to be the only two people that can be funny. When you watch the original series, you love the banter, the witty banter between yeah. all of them. All of Spock, them. Yeah. Bones, oh, Kirk human and alien alike are making fun of each other and taking a piss out of each other. I mean, this is what it should have been. It's what it right? should be, yeah, yes. exactly. And they, exactly. for some weird reason, they kept thinking, no, only the doctor can be funny, you know? And it's just, it's horrible because I felt that every human character from Janeway to Cote to Paris to, to Kim, each of us as human beings are funny people in our own right with their own types of sense of humor. They're all different but very, very funny people. And they really missed out on that. That would have just- Yeah, such a shame. Oh yeah. Especially if you have people, it'd be one thing if everyone was not funny, but everyone's yeah. very funny off camera and they missed that. I kept telling yeah. people, if someone had a video camera and was recording every time that we were not filming on the set, that would be the number one rated sitcom in the world. Uh, the okay. content would, gold right Oh there, my it? gosh, we had so <laughs> much fun and they missed that. They could have put that into the script. Oh, yeah. That's not their loss. Their loss. Yeah. Did you? Uh, would you think of going into that now? In, back into directing, or is that kind of gone? Or no, it's not necessarily gone, but it's sort of like at this point, I would rather write than direct. Yeah. To be yeah. perfectly honest, because that's that's where it's at. You know, the words on the page. True. And if well, you yeah. Good... If you're director, you somebody else's baby, isn't it? Still somebody else's baby, the exactly. So if yeah, I write, the true. directors are directing my baby is what they're doing, yeah. right? So yeah, that's the better <laughs> I, way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. If, um, oh, this is another, again, another question you've probably been asked before. Look, if you could go back and sort of play any of the other characters instead of your own as, as a full-time role, so you, you were never Harry Kim, was there another role that you thought you might have been able to have a stab on? You job. mean in Star Trek or in, in just Voyager. in general? In Voyager? Oh, in Voyager, but in Star Trek, in, 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 uh, widen it out to any Star Trek. Is there a Megan, who would I play if it wasn't Harry? <laughs> That's tough. Like, I would want to say something silly, like Neelix, but to be serious, though, like if you were to play uh, another character, like I'd be, if that was you, yeah, your if it was, me. was that character the yeah, entire it, time through, Yeah, I feel like and don't don't count gender at all like no i know aside. i know like, what are you what are you gonna go well, who do you think i don't I know play? i keep wanting to think chakotay but you wouldn't at that time you weren't old enough to play that no role. yeah who else who's closest in age to me well jerry was yes <laughs> you imagine you as, as seven. i would play seven yes <laughs> Ta -da! i don't know if you'd make a good seven uh, i, I mean know. you could have been a bore I could, definitely just, yeah. just you know that deliver that that very dry delivery of lines that she has. I mean, I could definitely pull that off. So I think I would be able to do that. She, she's mellowed cool. slightly now. She's a Picard, to be fair. Uh, she's what? She says right. what? she's mellowed character character now. Uh, she's oh, Picard. she's mellowed more mellowed yeah. now. She's a lot okay. more 
yeah, kick yeah. ass now. Yeah, yeah, she's she is more kick ass. She's more conversational. She's not as borgish <laughs> in Picard. No. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I love the. <laughs> um, uh, you were up to date with uh, Picard. Yeah. Have you watched all of it? Oh, I love the, uh, uh, the most of it. Ma Megan yeah. has watched all of it. I have. Yeah, I love the uh, the bit at the start when um, they're on the on the um, which it was Stargazer, isn't it? On the Stargazer, on the yeah. new Stargazer, and uh, they're going out to try and find out why there's this alien signal being transmitted that's going through the um, the uh, protocols for joining the Federation, and. Yeah. Um, Jerry Ryan's character seven pretty much straight away realizes it's bored. We've got to get out of here. We've got to attack. Oh, like yeah. we've been stupid, and uh, okay. just straight away, yeah, just taking on Janeway. I think there and she. Yeah, you know Megan when she was younger, she dressed as. Didn't you do? Didn't you do something for Halloween? Yeah, yeah, I dressed as seven of nine for Halloween. This is before One I year, knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that funny? <laughs> How prophetic is that? Look at that. How old are you? Pathetic. Not pathetic. I said, prof I said um, prophetic. Prophetic. P R O P H E T I C. I think I was 15. How prophylactic of you. <laughs> How old are you? Sorry. I was 15. You're, she was 15. Yeah. And she dressed as seven. Isn't that cute, guys? I think that's, that's cool. Awesome. It might confuse people. They're going door to door, trick or treating. Yeah. And if no they're not knew. Star Trek fans, they wouldn't quite get it. No one got it. Oh, no, yeah. That's no one got it. it? You, you no, because at that time, like no one, when I was growing up, I watched That's TNG, true. Voyager, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. I didn't know anyone who watched Else it other than my family. Now I know people who watched it. I'm like, where were you guys my entire life? Like I was all alone. I watched yeah. stuff that a lot of people like I went to school yeah. with didn't watch. Yep. <laughs> I just keep telling her, if you can find a photo of you as seven of nine when you were 15, that would be, I, I want to <laughs> see that. <laughs> that would put, that's the icing on the cake if you can find that photo was there a photo that, taken? but wants to see it no i have one i have a photo you, of that and then and like, you've never showed this to me no and then i have the photo of when <laughs> i was lydia lydia oh from, from uh from uh beetlejuice, beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah those are the two lydia. things that yeah. i was in I middle school for halloween oh that's cute okay mm -hmm. right. I, had an, I, I did have an ex once who had a like a great jumpsuit when she put it on, all she, she had blonde hair too. So all she needed was a com badge, and it does look like seven of nine. But really, it wasn't Ooh. a Star Trek fan, so it was like, no, it's not, no, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, <laughs> she would fight it. Oh. And when you put the pictures next <clears throat> to each other and then send them oh to her, she doesn't like, she didn't like that. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Good it's thing you're not with her anymore. That party pooper. <laughs> I, I wonder what happened. To her. <laughs> I can't understand it. <laughs> Oh, okay, I did yeah. uh, want to check. I, I was looking uh, online earlier, and it's sort of uh, a bit of trivia I've heard before, but apparently the Naomi Wildman uh, character, there's kind of two stories out there. There's one that uh, she was named after someone that Brandon Braga was, was dating kind of around that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the other one is that Jimmy Digg, the, I think the writer of her first episode, it was a a, based on a, a young girl that died in an accident and provided uh, organs to somebody and saved somebody's life. The latter um, is the correct story. Yeah, uh, yeah but it's cool. not Naomi. It's Samantha Wildman. Ah, so uh, it wasn't yeah. either one. It's her mother. Uh, yeah. Uh, we know. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, rubbish on the internet. A lot of this stuff needs editing. And there is. There <laughs> is. You know, the the, the biggest rubbish Makes story is. Sense. Yeah, the biggest rubbish story was that um, that they would that that Harry, the character of Harry Kim was on the chopping block, um, guaranteed. And then all of a sudden I got people's 50 most beautiful people <laughs> on People <laughs> Magazine. And then that changed it all. And you know- He's 20th coolest bachelor. Yeah, and he's 20 coolest bachelor. Me and Don Johnson. And I kept wow. thinking, okay, hmm, who's writing this crap on the internet? <laughs> that, is, that is not what happened. It, it oh, definitely oh. not, not it's, the reality of the situation at all, so. It's funny you mentioned old interviews, and we were talking about clothes earlier. So I am going to pull this out. Um, sure. But uh, <coughs> um, you, you obviously talked about comfortable clothes and wearing them on set, but obviously yeah. offset yeah. doing interviews and stuff, so they make you wear silly sort of clothes. Now, uh, one of our, one of our one of our team earlier found this photo of you from an interview, and I'm going to show you this. What, what, what? I knew it was going to be that, that one. <laughs> What's happening with those trousers? And when I, when I, when I was talking, when I, earlier when I was talking to her, she pulled this out for me. I said, when I show them this, 
to show the trousers, all I'm going to have to be doing is flashing a crotch all over, all over the screen. <laughs> screen. And I showed that, it's like... <laughs> okay, that is from the People magazine photo shoot. Now, here's the funny thing. They did two photo shoots. One photo shoot was with a whole a different... There were two different photographers. So people was not happy with the first photographer's work, which was in yeah. a way cooler... I thought better wardrobe. And then, so they reset, we're going to reshoot all of this. Um, so the original one, the original one was me uh, in kind of like a dark, like black pants and maybe a gold flecked sort of shirt inside, yeah. like a, inside, like a, like a, oh, it was like a warehouse or like a meat packing facility. It was kind of trying to be kind of trying to be hip or whatever and they okay. hated it people was like oh they, they got a new photographer a new wardrobe stylist and they put those pants on me and when they when they printed that my mom got a copy of that she goes are those your pants i go no mom i do not own those pants not at all those pants were probably you know five sizes too small first of all i mean there is no room at all in those pants and they and they just oh i couldn't believe they oh, actually it. made me wear those and put those on but yeah well, i mean look we pulled that out and we were we were going to just find some nice embarrassing photos of us but sadly there were no time so let's move on <laughs> uh, <laughs> So we spoke to uh, to, to Garrett a little bit. Let's give uh, Megan a second as well. So, uh, yeah. what's the uh, what's the next horror movie marathon that you're going to be uh, oh. showing uh, Garrett? I don't know. I mean, we've been through so so many. What should we go through next? We well, okay. Saw. So we did Saw. We did, did Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. I mean, you've we... seen like you've already seen like Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. We've Meets, been doing. Oh my God! You did. Uh, um, human centipede that was nasty oh gosh that nasty. Ooh, that's horrible yeah. he did that all on his own i did and then um, um we did uh, what's the one with um uh oh, scream yeah scream so we did the whole scream uh, which i hadn't yeah. seen any of except for the original so yeah we did yeah. all the, the additional did screams. you do all the halloweens yeah, maybe we should do Halloween. Maybe. And then we go to a horror convention in Calgary every year. Um, and we met oh, up yeah. with who did we meet up with? Who are the two actors that were there? They played. Oh my um, god, I can picture them. And the oh. one guy, his last name is Mears Mertz. Yeah, well, one of them played Jason, Jason? and one of them played Freddie. Is not Freddie, uh, uh, Jason, and uh, what was the other one? Michael Myers. Michael Myers, yeah. So, uh, in, yeah. in later, in later um, versions, right? So, and then one of those guys ended up being on Orville. There's an episode right. where, yeah, they're, they're these really tall, big, tall aliens, and he was the main alien guy in there, full prosthetics. But um, mm -hmm. Derek Mears, that's his name. Yeah, right? and Tyler Main. Uh, and Tyler Main, Tyler Main, and Derek Mears. So we ended up um, cool. uh, walking up to their tables and saying, "Hey, what's up?" And they were like, "Hey, you're on Voyager, right?" And so it was kind of like a, kind of like, a, "Oh yeah, hey, let's have dinner." So we all had dinner with these. Two nice. Guys. Yeah, but well, yeah. What else are we gonna see, Meg? Make I don't know. I think we should do Halloween so you can see all of them. So I don't yeah, think you've seen. I'll the do. I haven't ones. seen. No, I have not seen all the Halloween. Um, do you say that you've <laughs> seen the Jason X and Freddy versus Jason? I've seen those. I don't. Think I have not has. seen those. No, yeah. you've not seen Jason they're, goes to space. They're no. quite campy, but they're, they're fun I, to yeah. watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my still my favorite from childhood is Phantasm. Oh my gosh, mm. I love I love that one. And then um, also. Um, uh oh god uh, what are the what's the series with pinhead in it um hellraiser hellraiser yeah, yeah yeah i like i like that one too so yeah i think the uh, the new uh david Cro david cronenberg film is going to be interesting he's not uh, done anything for quite a while a uh, cronenberg uh hellraiser another hellraiser series thing? no just or... a, a a new horror film that he's oh, uh, bringing out soon but it's, it's a long while since he's he's interesting. done anything yeah, it has been a long time wow so that'll be interesting they're yeah. always very arty and very interesting they are. I agreed. agreed. That's be good. So, uh, what did you uh, think of the uh, Voyager twenty fifth anniversary? Did you, did you think it was celebrated well enough? Did COVID kind of ruin it? COVID ruined it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because everything That's was scheduled so. for twenty twenty. The twenty fifth <laughs> anniversary was twenty twenty. It yeah. started it's, off good. Well, yeah. The first thing we, there was only one scheduled event that went off that was the star trek cruise cruise yeah yes and uh when we when that cruise ship came back in it went back out 
one more cruise, one more week, came back in, and that's and everything shut down after that. Right. So that was March of 2020 when everything, uh, when the world stopped spinning. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. And so the the big UK celebration, destination Star Trek, was was postponed um, till November of 2021. It, yeah. Uh, sure. And it was it was a shell com- uh, in comparison to what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Was that to be is pretty much what we said. Yeah. It was Janeway and me. And honestly, Megan was like, Megan kept saying, no, she's like, I don't want you to travel right now. I, it's just too risky. It's too risky. And I said, I cannot let Kate be the only Voyager person there. That's just going to be ridiculous. And they yeah. were, they were scrambling. They were like, okay, we're going to call the guy that played her lover in the Irish, you know, holodeck, you know, so- Oh yeah. Fairhaven we're gonna find him and then we'll grab oh the board queen she's in she's in the UK if we can grab her so they they were just pulling at straws yeah, whatever they could get anybody that they could get that had any affiliation yeah. with Voyager because of what happened and so that postponing was was bad it was not yeah, it was it was such a shame oh it was gosh. I mean it should have really coincided with the with the Voyager documentary coming out as well and yeah, it, it could have no. should have been such a Every, bigger thing yeah, it all got pushed back. It really did. But you know, that's life, right? Sometimes yeah, life hands these you things lemons. Happen. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. So that was it was really unfortunate. But um we, you know, I think I think the fans still kind of stuck together online and put stuff out. Yeah. Um, you know, so it did feel like it was uh, it was talked about quite a lot, which was still nice. Mm, it's true. Because a convention yeah, in a case of um the, the content at the convention was very weak not not yeah fault other than really i think covid and, and schedules and yeah kind of thing. but it was very yeah. weak but the plus plus side that i think uh, pipped it for everybody else was that for the first time fans could get back together again get back together yeah uh, it was that yeah. Sense of community and i think that uh, that trumped the fact that it was a little bit poor in terms of mm-hmm. the, the scope of what it could have been yeah yeah I agree. It was still nice because it was the first time, well, especially in the UK at least, it was the first time we were all, we were all able to get Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. No. So, so, so I think it's about time for a first feature, isn't it, Mr. P? Well, yeah. Um, we, we, we normally do like, some geeky guys' favourites, which is, uh, sorry, yes, fa- uh, not favourites. Yeah, yes, 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 let's do Yeah, you are right. <laughs> let's do uh, geeky guys' favourites. Sorry, I'm just miles away. Uh, I'm just sat here. Come on, get with it. Completely, I forgot where we are. I told you, I didn't know what <laughs> Uh, which uh, normally on our podcast, yeah, we, we come out with our, our favourite of a particular thing, but we're not. Yeah, we ask each other, don't we? We, we ask, uh, we ask our guests what their uh, favourite of a particular thing is. Oh, cool. Okay. So, uh, what we were going to ask you is, and this is obviously to both of you. So, we're going to say, other than Star Trek, what's your favourite piece of science fiction? So, whether it's a TV show, a book, a movie, a book, or you know, book series. I'm gonna let Megan take that first. So. Oh my God, I can't think of show because I love them all. Um, like I grew up on sci-fi shows and stuff. Yeah. But interesting enough, I just finished reading a book for a book club I'm a part of, and it's called um, I can't remember who wrote it. It's by the author of The Martian, but the oh, book right. is called Project Hail Mary, and I love it. Like I just finished it. It took me a day to read it. And it's supposed to be like a sci-fi thriller, but it ends up actually being adorable and cute. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. I thought it was cute. And um, yeah, that's the book that I just finished reading. And that's the first thing that came to my head when I thought of sci-fi. Okay. Uh, other than Trek, for me, um, I mean, my introduction to sci- science fiction was 1977 oh, yeah. Star Wars. So 1977 Star Wars introduced me to sci-fi. But I'm going to say my favorite sci-fi other than Trek is going to probably be Farscape. <laughs> I really, really, really like Farscape just because it's, it's you know, it was filmed in Australia. And it's just, you know, you don't have very many Australian sci-fi shows. So Is that, is that interesting you mentioned that? Because um, I was a big fan of that when it came on TV originally. Yeah. Um, watched it all the way through and yeah. I've been trying to get Mr P in it and obviously we do our fortnightly podcast and we talk about either a, a movie series or TV yeah. show um, and we, we I want to try and get Farscape in there 
Um, yeah. But Mr. P's got to catch up with it and get through yeah. some episodes first. Yeah. Right. There's a few things actually. That Mr. Dave comes to me and says, oh, you've got to watch this. And I still have yeah, so good. Five so good. Yeah. that they're waiting. It's just time, time, time. I hear you. Um, it's kind of Voyager a little bit in, in a strange kind of way where he's kind of flung far from home, isn't he? And, yeah. Yeah. You know, has to try and work out how to get back and if there's a home to go back to and and get Definitely. used to all these aliens and these people that he's, he's ended up being thrown in with. And the other parallel is <sighs> the living ship. The living yeah. ship, if you think about Voyager having bioneural gel packs in the circuitry, yeah. right? We have organic material. And then that ship, I mean, Farscape takes it to the next level, which is the ship is alive, the entire ship, yeah. which is kind of cool. And again, a theme that was used on Voyager. I almost feel like Maybe the start the Farscape writers were like, "Oh yeah, Voyager used that. Let's let's see how we can kind of develop that a little bit." Yeah. Our show. Borrowed, yeah. borrowed. Yeah. It. borrowed. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, you you so, talk a little bit about borrowed things occasionally on on a little podcast that you're involved with, Garrett. Yes. Um, uh, which we'll uh, perhaps just slide into now. So, yeah, uh, sure. I was going to say we've got Garrett and Megan yeah. here. We've got to uh, so we've got have a word about Delta Flyers, haven't we? Of yeah. course. Uh, but Andy Weir, by the way, sorry, was the author. Oh, yes, the author, yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, uh, yeah, so since being on Voyager, you're now uh, re-watching every episode in chronological order and uh, and giving us the uh, behind-the-scenes scoop and your your thoughts and memories on, on each episode, which is yeah. absolutely amazing. And I have to say, it's been my it's been my uh, gym podcast. So when I go to the oh. gym, I jump on the treadmill, put nice. the podcast on uh, and, and listen to uh, Delta Flyers. Uh, it's the only it's the only way I would sit down and, and have the patience to listen to a podcast all the way through. Plus, <laughs> plus it means that it forces me to go to the gym because I need to listen to the next one. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, so we have helped you stay in shape. Yes, is what is you're trying to tell me? Wow! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that, Megan. Because of us, Mr. P's in shape. This is the good thing. <laughs> He's throwing out some good into the world. <laughs> What's funny is you, you are, of course, quite funny on there as well. So there's quite often a chat. I'm running along on the trouble of the gym, and all of a sudden, because I, you're start laughing. I start laughing out loud. Oh, no. laughing. <laughs> People are walking past you, going like, yeah. "This guy's got dreads." <laughs> 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 oh. He's laughing and running. Yeah, I think the only uh, slightly annoying thing for me was is that just before Delta Flyers came out, I just finished a full rewatch of Voyager. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> so it kind of would have been nice to have kind of done it with you and watch the episode right. and then so, watch, watch your recap. But it was like, I'm do so I do it all straight again? I'm so sorry <laughs> we did not send you the memo. We should have said, "Hey, well, yeah. we're about to do a recap of everything. Yeah. Don't stop get into what you're it. doing. Don't start <laughs> watching yet. Wait." Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, we're we're uh, we're really enjoying it, aren't we? And uh, oh. I, th I think a lot of the things that. Um, that you and Robbie say a lot of the times that are pretty much what I've what I've heard kind of between me and Mr. P have said before yeah. or the fans yeah. have said. Um, sure. So I think you pretty much say oh, true and honest as it is, and there's no yeah. ego there or anything, and trying to, yeah. you know, brighten up other bits you may have been in, like Robbie will say, oh, I wasn't in this episode very much, and, I, and he just said, yes, ma'am. In yeah. like, <laughs> and that's it and he just says how poor it is and how crap and the other things he could have done in that episode he'd been yeah. given the chance um, yeah. and the same for yourself as well yeah. Um, so yeah we are enjoying that and as we said in the email um, in honour of the Delta Flyers we have written a limerick and a haiku <laughs> oh we're so excited to hear this okay go ahead so do you want to go with your limerick first Mr P yeah let's go with the limerick first and see if I did go this see if I did this justice so um Delta Flyers podcasting is their game. All episodes of Voyager rewatched, they proclaim. Some great, some diverse, I think all would say, but the series overall certainly celebrated to acclaim. Oh, oh so good, good job. Okay, look at this. I love how you guys are inspired by the, <laughs> uh, the podcast to do your own limerick. And oh, now yeah. the, your haiku, let's hear it. Yeah, rewatch, consider. Space, the human condition, home, far away. Woo! Ooh, I like that one. That's good too. You guys are you guys are hitting it out of the park. I love it. I was Very curious because when I heard that, I'm like, how are they gonna do this? Yeah, I know. I know. She told me you guys were gonna come out with this. I was like, oh, I hope it's I hope it's, it's one of those ideas where Dave said, wouldn't it be funny if? And I said, oh, that's a brilliant idea. Well, good job, um, Dave. 
and, and yeah, yeah. It, it's it's actually with actually doing it, it does make you realize how difficult it can be yeah. yes <laughs> well, right? you've got to choose certain words and certain syllables and you're trying oh to my say a certain God. thing yeah and it's, I, it's, I, I mean, so even truly. more difficult because uh, Dave, kudos to Dave because he actually wrote both of those. I didn't actually write one. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, he did have the time. To Dave, Dave simply did it and just oh, messaged me Dave. and said, "I've done them. They're in the notes. Have a look." Uh, Dave, yeah. Yeah. That was it, so. oh. wow, nice. Dave, you get two gold stars. You get oh, two gold you stars much. for the effort that you put into this, and you did both haiku and limerick. Good for you. Good job. Yes, yeah, so look, look, we had to we had to do that in honor. Yeah. Had to be them. Yeah. Um, Love it. Thank you. So Delta flights, how did that start? Where did the idea come from for doing that? Was, was that sort of a, a me and Dave thing where we sit down? Ma and Megan, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, it was pretty much Megan. Megan was like, look, you know, you've been talking about doing this thing for a while. If you're going to do it, you better do it now. And this was beginning of pandemic. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, she was like, what else are you going to do? I mean, this is the time. So yeah. am I right, Megs? Yeah. You want to continue? You can tell the rest. No, I mean, like, that's pretty much what happened i think we yeah. talked about it at the end of march i'm yeah. guessing because like our yeah because everything our patreon shut down was in, set yeah. like mid-april yeah. um so we had yeah. been working we on it for a couple weeks but yeah i came yeah. to garrett and he was like yeah i mean like yeah we can do it and then um a couple days went by i'm like no like we you say yeah we need to do this and then yeah, he and I she suggested su he called she, Robbie and she suggested Robbie because I said, I said, you know, I don't, he's too busy. I said, he's always directing. He has no time for this. And she said, he's not busy now. And I said, you're right. He isn't <laughs> busy now. <laughs> and so I called him and then I said, I said, Robbie, I think this is, uh, this is my pitch. You know, you and I do this thing. Um, we, we talk about the behind the scenes of Voyager episodes and we, we record this on Zoom. And we can do this because everyone's locked down. We yeah. can just use our high speed internet and be able to get this thing going. And he was like, well, you think anyone will be interested? And I said, oh. yes, <laughs> of course. Have you been to a Star Trek convention? Yes, there are people that will be interested. Of course there will be. He goes, I don't know. I mean, I gotta think about this. So he took some time and um, <laughs> he came back and he's like, okay. And it was, you know, the plan is the Delta Flyers team is basically Megan, myself, Robbie, and his his significant other, his now his now wife, Rebecca. So um, yeah. all the duties are sort of like split amongst all four of us, basically. Yeah. Um, and you know, he jumped on board, and I, I'm just happy to say that I'm I was right and he was wrong because he thought nobody would be into this. He thought this would be something <laughs> that we would do, and the, there would be crickets. You know, you would hear like right. no one would even care the about tumbleweed. It go. Yeah, past. and then you know at this point. <laughs> you know we're, we're we've probably already we're probably past three million we're we were just under three million downloads total when we we checked last you know wow. uh, of the free podcast which is a lot there's a lot of people listening to this which is really really rewarding and i presume and, your number of patrons are going up as well oh yeah and then of course yeah we have yeah we, we monetize it with with patreon so we have a, a subscription service Good. and we have uh we have a lot of subscribers. We really do, and it's it's really eye opening. I'd so, say the time uh, when um, I knew it was a success, um, the Star Trek convention. It might have been a DST after you first started. Um, right. I actually went to the convention with a Tom and Harry Delta Flyers T-shirt on. Oh, um, okay. Just to kind of put the word out there a little yeah. bit, and I thought yeah. I'm going to be the only one. Oh no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe because right? it was early, very early days and then um, and then i saw people with the delta flyers rucksacks and other people's shirts and i was thought oh good this is you know really yeah. getting out there and doing really it's well getting and around it was, yeah it was yeah it was so lovely to see yeah no, yeah it's it's, it's become a community like honestly yeah. a it lot has. of the people have become family we have i'm not gonna name them because i'm not gonna yeah. call them out since they probably don't want me to say this but yeah. we have two members who never knew each other yeah. have met through the Delta Flyers and are dating. Are now. Oh, wow. Now. I think it's Look so that. cute. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an awesome community thing that Imagine. is, isn't it? When you can yeah. bring people together like that. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Oh, fantastic. You might have your uh, first Delta Flyers wedding then. Yeah. Yes, I actually get them together, get I'm married. Like, might get him better back. invite us. They will yeah, probably be the first. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so, nice. 
Nice. Maybe, I don't know if you've thought about this, but you're obviously reviewing every episode. So when you get to the end of series seven, yes. Have you thought about or talked about what you might do when you get to the end of those episodes? Yeah. First of all, I want to tell Megan, that I don't know if you know that, but that's how in the UK they say season instead of seasons, they say series. Series, so, that's yeah, right. So, because when you get, so when we get to series seven, is so they're saying when you get to season seven, seven. but in the UK, no one uses season. It's no. all series. I mean, I understood what he was yeah. saying. Yeah, but so, still, it's it's yeah. very unique to the oh, to the. Never British. noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and there's a there's our dog. Yeah. No hanging one. out. Okay. Um, what are we gonna do? We, is that what you're? Is that your question? Yeah, is, is there that, a plan for, for, for? Uh, we have some. There's we have plan. some plans. Yeah, <laughs> and we will make that announcement when we get closer to yeah. that date. But there okay. are there. We do have plans. So uh, okay. and we we don't want to nice. we don't want to give it away too. Well, we soon, wouldn't so, want to spoil uh, yeah. it either. No, no. Let no. <laughs> everyone's you know? appetite now that, that, yeah. that there is something else going to come up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it's quite nice as well that it, it does keep you in like really constant contact with uh, Robin, with Rebecca than you would normally yeah. by do, doing Delta Flyers. Like you say, you can just quickly nip on Zoom and you know. I've seen I've seen talking. him more now, after, twenty five years after the ending of the show, than I did when I was on the show. On the show, okay, so yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, I, it's oh, so true. Blood. You do have lots of guests as well from from the show come on and yep. speak to you, so that must have been nice as well to to get yeah. those back. Yeah, our them. our goal is to try to get every single person uh, that we've worked with on that show onto the podcast. Like, I mean, everybody. So uh, whether it's sound or makeup or hair or or you know directors, security. yeah, security. Yeah, we're, we're gonna have. Some- yeah, we're we're plans to have the security guys as well. So as much as we can get, we're gonna we're gonna go through. We're gonna it. do I'm it. Not quite to hear that just, story. Uh, <laughs> but just make sure the next time you uh, you call Bobby Picardo, he's not on his uh, bike oh, on his bicycle uh, bike ride. <laughs> when you guys heard that, when you guys listened yeah. to that podcast, were you both like going, "Oh no"? I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah. He's literally truly, killed the doctor because you could hear him go, <laughs> ah, <laughs> like you, yeah, he's yeah. like. Ah. <laughs> And we're like, just think, what have they done? Bob? Yeah, we. <laughs> and he was on the was trails like... as well. So you were like, it's not from the edge, has it? Yeah. I know. And I did I, in the podcast, do I say to Robbie, you killed Bob Picardo? Did I say something? Yeah. 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 I, say that, yeah. yeah. No, I go, oh killed my God, Papa Robbie, Cardo. did you kill Bob Picardo? Yeah. I think it's like, I'm only 2% injured. I, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> it was his right, was it his right or uh, one of his butt cheeks? He, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. He, yes. Yeah, it was. It was fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, oh, that, that's definitely a lesson for the uh, you to yeah. find out what they're doing before you get them on the show. <laughs> but, oh, but the thing is, but th- that was that moment was gold. If you think about yeah. that, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And you guys know you put out a yeah. show, so if you if something like that happens on your live show, it's in, it's amazing. Yeah, it's just, you just love it, and it's the best. Yeah. 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 I mean, not to say it's the best that he got injured, but it's the best that something crazy like that happened. Yeah, and it was caught on. On, it was recorded. You hear him <laughs> crashing. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, it was kind of the shock and, oh, God, is he okay? And then it was yeah, just funny when he was, uh, when he was fine. Oh, lovely. Um, so so yeah. when we're recording the podcast, is, is there quite a lot that's edited out in terms of stuff that you can't use? I'm just, I'm more at Megan for this one. Uh, I mean, what's it like looking after the boys? Uh, <laughs> do you feel like the mum sometimes? Yes, she is. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, Rebecca and I, we kind of have a um, a hang of, like, what should not be put out there. There's things that, like, we don't feel would have offended us, but it, they could offend other people. And yeah. we're still learning. Like, every once in a while, we'll get messages saying, like, oh, you shouldn't have had this, or, like, I felt triggered by this. So we try to be more careful now. And if it's if we think like if this could offend someone, then we just won't even put it out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or even just like things that aren't really offensive, but makes it sound like Garrett and Robbie might be too critical, even though that's not their intention. Is yeah, they're not being critical, but it can come off that way. We we try to clean that up too. 
Like, I, I'm going to say that there's more of my ramblings that get edited than Robbie's. I'm going to say that <laughs> much right now. I, mean, I think we both have been edited at one point, but uh, I, and a lot of times we will ramble on, like we will be, cause I'll, I'll get a message from Megan saying, stop going off topic. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You know, stay <laughs> on topic. Stay it, on topic. You know, it like, can okay. mess up the editing. Yeah. The, the, the crazy York, thing I, is, I, I, I don't know if you found this, but um, I mean, we always enjoy like when you and Robbie, you know, do, do kind of talk on about what you've been doing and what's going on in your lives. Yeah. And yeah. the Voyager stuff is a bit later on. We do love that. We yeah. we found that we've spoke to a lot of our listeners, listeners and they've said, oh, we just like listening to the beginning of it before you even get to the subject to... <laughs> Yeah, you know, just listen to you guys are talking about yeah. 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 yeah, and yeah. what you what you're up to. So it's, mm-hmm. so it's funny that it, uh, it goes like that. With me uh, in my normal job, and he um, he uh, he says he listens to, he's listened to all our podcasts now up to date, uh, and some of them he's not listened to all of them yet. And he said, "I have just listened to the beginning bit where you talk. When you got to talking about the topic, I've not watched. I've not listened to it yet because I've not seen it. So I'll come back. To it. Yeah. <laughs> they've still downloaded the episode. You know." <laughs> talked about a new film that's come out he's not listening right. to it yet. Oh. He's not watched it yet right? yeah i love it so only oh. the intro until he sees the yeah. film then he'll come back to it then. yeah I so he listens yeah. to 20 minutes of me and dave saying what we've done over the last two weeks coming out with right. one of them weird impressions of alan partridge or whoever it is and and uh and then when we get to the right let's talk about then he stops <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Each turn, but yeah we love it it's a listen it's a download we don't mind it <laughs> they can do it they can do what they like Love's no fan. Yeah. Uh, i think we need to uh, get onto a bit of uh, trivia don't we mr okay. you've got a bit of trivia yeah. lined up for so, um, star trek it's, it's voyager, kind of or to, to, to voyager really but one of our other features is geeky guys did you know yeah so the idea is that we come out with a piece of trivia about the thing we're talking about now obviously voyager is a big thing we're talking about okay now, i don't think we're going to pull one out of here that you don't know probably but you never, you never know. know. Never know. So we'll just pick a let's, couple. Let's let's go. Uh, the first the first one I've got, which I thought was interesting, just from a geeky point of view, was uh, I've got a note here to say that uh, Voyager was the first Star Trek series to use computer generated exterior shots. If that's true or not, I don't know if that's true or not. But I, I I'm going to say that's false. Is it? Because I know TNG. I, like exterior know. of Voyager, or exterior of like other ships. Just, just CGI, like computer generated yeah. exterior I, shots. I, like. assume I, I assume it means ships. Because I think all through TNG and DS9. So you're saying TNG were all models and not CGI? I really? So. Wow. Interesting if that's right. I, 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 that'd be very prop, interesting. The main hero prop for the Enterprise D, uh, the large full size six foot one, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Series 3. Yeah. Um, I think. Post series three, they changed it because they realized they had to change things like 10 forward on it and so on. Okay. So, so they had like a five foot, or a smaller model. Uh, okay, okay. But I know they were still using models a lot of the time. But I'm yeah. Not, that's, don't take that Ooh. as possible. Uh, but we'll I'll have to look into that a bit yeah, more. Yeah. I'll research that and we'll get back to you. If that we'll happens. get back well, to you. You will. I'll get letters. I'll get letters. <laughs> you will. <laughs> You're wrong. Uh, You're wrong. <laughs> there's always someone out there that knows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> Uh, the other one here was uh, Jenny Pellin, uh, was the only one not to wear a Starfleet uniform, apparently, uh, from the regular cast. So even Neelix wore gold in an episode, I think, uh, yeah. with a jumpsuit yeah. when he was exercising, even blue at one point. Uh, and of course, Jerry Ryan wore the blue Starfleet uh, uniform when she's in uh, jumping back in time. That's right. So right. yes, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Uh, Cass was okay. Jennifer Lee and Cass was the only one that did not wear a proper Starfleet uniform, but she always had a com badge on. Mm-hmm. She had a com yeah. badge. So yeah. Uh, and the last one I wrote down was uh, Tom Morello, who was uh, from the band Race, Rage Against the Machine, uh, yes. was a guest starred in an episode and offered directions to Captain Janeway. And I can't remember where that's from, but I'm guessing because just before we came on, I was trying to remember where that was because I didn't want to look it up because that's he's cheap. in the well, he's in the lower decks of Voyager, yes. basically. Is it, is it so when you go down to find Shooter, is that right? I, I don't remember the exact moment, but I know that I know that Tom is 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 a massive Star Trek fan. So when he when he was able to play uh, that role, he, it just it made his life. <laughs> basically, he was so happy. Yeah, he was really 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 happy. No, no, guy, no. you're right. Sorry, no, it wasn't Shooter. Sorry, no, it was the it was the was it the younger. 
kids. Then Janeway takes them on a oh lift. maybe it yeah um, this you, mean, you mean the you mean the Borg uh, the the Borg twins like that later is that what you're saying those okay. kids. Memory Palace is late. It's, 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 That's okay. It's down. Don't but, worry uh, about it. We'll, anyway, we'll have yeah, to find. He was in one, and you knew that. But never mind. Dave, come uh, on. Yeah. So uh, my first yeah. one. Uh, I've got a bit of trivia here that apparently uh, in the mid '90s, uh, Mr. Garrett Wong went to a uh, costume fitting at uh, Paramount oh. Pictures <laughs> and uh, was in a hurry and nearly ran over uh, Han Solo, Harrison Ford. That is that is true. <laughs> that is the absolute wow. truth. Yes. I almost maimed or killed Harrison Ford, Han Solo, Indiana Jones. Uh, you just keep naming all the... I mean, yeah. honestly, he's probably one of my favorite actors. And for, for me to have almost killed him, yeah, oh, yeah. if I really did harm him, I, I, I don't know if I would... I don't know if I would have been able to go on living myself. I mean, I, I <laughs> no, personally... That was pretty died. horrendous, isn't it? <laughs> yes. they, they would have gone with the next actor to play Harry Kim. You would have lost that role. Yeah, yeah. I, would have, I would have lost out to uh, Jonathan K. Kwan from uh, Indiana Jones, Short Round. He was actually auditioning for Harry as well. I saw him walk uh, out. Yeah. Blimey. He just said recently on an interview that he'd be quite happy to come back and reprise that role, I think. I just saw someone somewhere recently that had said that. Um, Oh, that he said that? Really? Yeah, I think he said recently. He'd be really happy to come back and then and take it. Yeah. Again. Yeah. No, I actually met yeah. him um, uh, a few times, and it's it's pretty funny that uh, <laughs> I was like, hey, I, I remember seeing you walk out of the Voyager audition, and he was like, oh, you're the one that got it. I'm like, yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I bet it must be really interesting when, you, when you're going for auditions and you've got other people. Um, stood or sat in there and oh, yeah. you don't know if they're going for you, the part you're going for or if yeah. it's something different you do hear lots of funny stories where like are you in for him what are you doing what are you really oh for? yeah <laughs> no you know when it comes to asian american act or just asian actors in hollywood there's there's not a ton of them so you kind of get to know everybody there and mm. um but there was when i first started <laughs> going on auditions and most of the asian actors are very supportive of each other we're very complimentary like hey excited to see each other but i'm not going to name this person's name but he this guy my first audition he walks up to me he's like he's like hey let me see your resume i'm like huh and he's looking at it he's like he's like you know what you need more guest stars not co-stars like that this is look at my resume see all the guests i mean he was trying to psych me out you know what I'm saying? Oh, I probably. thought, wow, this one guy is so competitive. He's playing mind games with me in, oh, a, in the God. waiting room of to get into the yeah. audition. As if and you're I not get, nervous enough, and then you got yes, to doing that as well. And then this guy does this to try to make remember. me feel inferior. Like my resume is 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 crap. You know, it's rubbish. Like look at this crappy re resume that you have. Oh, and I was That's like, oh nice. no, yeah. And then the funniest thing was when he walked out of the office from where I was sitting in the waiting room. I could see into the casting director and he did this thing where he looked back, he looked back in the room. He's like, ah, yeah, I know. Okay. Thank you so much. Great seeing you. And he walked on and she didn't even look at him. So he played, right. it, he played, it, up, he played it up. Like he had this inside, you know, uh, friendship with the casting director. And yeah. he, he, he played it as if she just told him something funny and he was like, I love you. Okay. And she yeah. had not even raised her head to look at him. And cause I saw that um, her through the little yeah. crack from the angle that I was sitting in. I, knew oh, yeah, I can see what he's doing. Yeah, so I realized, <laughs> oh my God, this guy is the mind game player of yeah. all mind game players. Make everybody else oh, think they've got no chance. Yes, they might as well no leave now, so yeah. I've got this part. Yeah. <laughs> having, looked at his resume, having looked at his resume and seeing all these things, that probably works as a technique for him. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the lesson here is, you know, for everyone who's listening to this, is that... Mm -hmm you know, don't compare yourself to what other people are around you, because you may think that the grass is greener on the other side, but in reality, it's just a house of cards. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing yeah. there. There's no substance. Yeah. Okay. So don't let it get you down. Just keep, keep your, keep your uh, eye on the prize, you know, keep your eye on your own work. Don't, don't look at all the other people. Yeah. Ignore the rest of them. Ignore it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. just a bunch of chatter. It's a bunch of white noise that you don't need to worry yourself with. Oh, dear. Right. Another couple of uh, bits of uh, trivia from uh, me then. Sure. Mr. P got a few uh, yes. out there. Um, so apparently when uh, Bobby Picardo auditioned for the uh, role of the Doctor, 
Twitter. Um, he was asked to say the line, somebody forgot to turn off my program. And then apparently it wasn't in the script, but he ad-libbed, I'm a doctor, not a light bulb. Right. And that got uh, him the part, apparently, that was impressed with the ad-libbing and uh, yeah. that worked towards him getting the part of the doctor, apparently. Yeah, that helped him. But the, the other fact is that he actually initially auditioned for Neelix. And uh, Ethan Phillips initially auditioned for the doctor. So that those right. were their first auditions and then they ended up uh, swapping. So uh, I think it worked out well. It, yeah, it would have been yeah, really interesting right to way see around. Ethan Phillips as, a doc, as the doctor and Papa Cardo as Neelix. That, that would be Ooh. a little, I, I don't think that would have worked as well to be perfectly no. honest. No, I think they got the right parts, didn't they? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. On TNG as well, I think Case McFadden and Marina Sirtis did the other ones as well. Oh, did they do, did, did they do the do si do as well? They yeah, I think for each I other's think, roles? Uh, okay, yeah, I believe it. Troy and, and, and I believe it. Sirtis went for, went for Crusher. And then... oh, again, I, I could never see Gates as Troy and yeah. I could never yeah. I could yeah. never see Marina as Crusher. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is, nah, no, not going to work, no. Uh, it just seems to always work out that in Star Trek, they said the, uh, the actors seem to get the roles they were fated they for. They were meant then. for, yeah. You can never see anybody else in those roles can yeah. across, yeah. across the franchise in a lot of yeah. them. Okay, so my last bit of trivia, this one's quite interesting, actually. Apparently on many of the uh, monitors in astrometrics, there are images, and apparently these images are taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, from the Cat's Eye Nebula, the Pillars of Creation, the Eagle Nebula, and apparently they, those pictures from the Hubble Telescope were in astrometrics on the wall on the monitors in a few episodes. Apparently. I did not know. You got yeah, one, Dave. You got one. Yeah, got one. We got him. Dave, you got me. <laughs> Davey, you got me. Oh, my goodness. Really? So, yeah. There that's were a, that's a new one bubble. for your next okay. convention. Yeah, <laughs> I right. would imagine. I would imagine if you're going to have an astrometrics lab with all these things on the screen, you, you might as well just get the image that you uh, stock images from what's out there. From what's yeah. Out. yeah. All right, I'll, I'll talk about that at the next con. If someone says, "What are your references?" I'll say, "Geeky guys." <laughs> uh, that's my references. Just yeah, always love a there. credit. Love a credit. Oh, yeah, and then if it's wrong, <laughs> we'll get all the black. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get the letters. I'm passing the buck right there. <laughs> Um, just one thing I wanted to quickly go back and talk about very quickly, but because uh, I just noticed it down here on my notes. Um, yes. Obviously, uh, Kim plays the clarinet. Mm. Uh, it says here that uh, you do not play the clarinet. Uh, no, I did play it on the show. Like they brought in a clarinet teacher and he right. taught me how to play the clarinet and he yeah. was my guide. And so I could play every single piece that Harry did play, not right. as well as my clarinet instructor. And in fact, this, the the playback that you hear in the episodes is my teacher. Right. Uh, is, yeah, so um, Steve Carr was his name and he is primarily a uh, saxophone player, but he can right. play clarinet very well, but he was my instructor. Did you have any, have any other thoughts of a different instrument you would have preferred to play, like a trumpet or something? Yeah, well, or no, quite happy with the clarinet? I preferred saxophone yeah. is what I yeah. said. And so at the very end toward the season seven, you do see a saxophone in Harry's quarters. So that was my-, yeah. my I, I could certainly see Harry Kim uh, swanning around the uh, the holodeck with a saxophone. Kim cool lean up against the wall in the, yeah. uh, in the corner. Yeah, yeah it's, a cool, it's a cooler, I think it's a cooler yeah. instrument actually, so. Definitely. Uh, it would have been cool to get the Vic Fontaine hologram program, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, uh, that'd be cool you too. You playing in the band? That would have been really yeah. Cool. Oh, Harry in the back. Oh wow, that. that what an Easter egg that would be. Harry Kim like just funny. sitting back there playing in Vic yeah. Fontaine's band. People are like, that guy looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> that could work. It's a holo program. Why not? Have good. It, it, yeah. It Why the double up? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I think we uh, we need to ask you as well before we uh, get towards. Uh, Finishing. Um, apparently, I heard um, not long ago that apparently you're going on a, a zero G trip with uh, yes. Essa. Yes. Is I, that for a documentary or something? It's, for, it? it's the for the Voyager documentary. That's correct. Nice. Um, and it it has already happened. Um, I was in Bordeaux, France, uh, where uh, the company that works with the European Space Agency is um, they they fly out of Bordeaux. They also fly yeah. out of a couple of other locations. And so Bordeaux was the uh, scheduled city. So I went to Bordeaux, France, flew on the zero G flight. And my first, my first zero G um, experience, I stayed, I started 
from a prone position. I was lying on my back yeah. and then I, I floated up. Then I started from a seated position and then I tried it from standing, you know? So I did those three ways. And then after I got used to it, then I brought out the, we brought out the props. So I was floating right. with the model of the Voyager, <laughs> of, the, of the USS Voyager. Nice. I floated with a model of the Delta Flyer shuttle as well, um, zero G with the shuttle. And then I had my six inch action figure and I floated with my own Harry Kim <laughs> next to me. Then I recreated the scene from Deadlock when Harry Kim number one falls out of the airlock with Balana trying to hold on to him. So I uh -huh. took the Voyager ship and I took my action figure and I spun him like he's flying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> like he Love just it. came out of the uh, yeah yeah the cargo bay or something. So uh, awesome. yes, so we did a lot of really fun things. Do you remember the first thing you said when you lifted? I don't know. What did I say? You don't remember? No. What did I say? You're think? like. I'm alive. Oh, <laughs> I'm alive is what I, yeah. I sent, a, I sent um, some footage from uh, my camera that someone took for me, so from my phone. So I sent that to Megan. And I guess the first thing I said when I floated was, I'm alive. That's funny. And the oh, for, for a second, I was expecting it was going to be, oh my. <laughs> that would have yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fitted would've... as well. Oh, no. Well, right. just... Yeah. Thought I was too was nervous. I was so nervous. Yeah, I just kept yeah. thinking that something was going to happen bad, you know. Well, it's <laughs> still dangerous going to space, isn't it? I mean, it's not, you, you know, it's, it's the technology is still not quite there to make it like feel 100% yeah. safe. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But, but the you first know, it's... text, oh, Go sorry. Go I was going to say the first text you sent me after was, um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but then you put like little squigglies and you're like, ghost Garrett, oh, <laughs> pretending really? you were dead. <laughs> Oh. I don't remember that. <laughs> no. Because I, I was I... like worried because I hadn't heard from you the entire yeah, time. Yeah, and I'm like, make sure you me. message me right after. Yeah. And you send me something and you're like, ghost Garrett. Like you were dead oh. and a ghost texting me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry did you uh, did you go for the pastry for breakfast or did you risk the eggs? No, the I, I uh, yeah, I had a very, very light breakfast. No eggs. Um, but they give you... Um, they give you motion sickness um, uh, medicine. Yeah, you get an injection, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we get the, you had a choice of oral or injection with the injection being more powerful of the two. And so I said, I'll take the injection. And everyone took the injection for the most part. Um, and that helped a lot. And the main thing when you do a zero G flight is always remember to look, uh, keep your head still. Like when you're on, on, the, on the, 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 the heavier G portion. So, so when you go up, you know, it goes up, the plane goes up and, and does basically a parabola. And so yeah. as it goes up and does the little loop, that's the zero G portion at the very top of the parabola. As it's going up, it's the double G portion. So you're, you're experiencing double G. And then as it, as you drop out of zero G, you're experiencing double G again when you're coming down. Uh -huh. So the double G portion is when you've got to keep your head totally still looking ahead. Because if you start turning around, looking at your friends going, oh yeah, I'm talking, you will start then feeling nauseous right. and you yeah. can possibly um lose your your breakfast at that point so Ooh, yeah. did you you get to uh, see the curvature of the earth and get high enough to get pictures and things like that or? uh yeah and no we didn't get that high but we um we we were i can't remember what altitude we were at but we were higher than sorry guys my whole my shield just came off <laughs> my little what do you call it this uh <laughs> thing here there we go um yeah so the altitude wasn't really as high as i thought we were gonna go but still this they did that 31 times like i was right. able to do zero g for the first i think they gave me the first 11 or 12 parabolas and the rest they opened up to the other scientists that were uh, yeah. not working on there because it was me and then a bunch of scientists doing experiments uh -huh. and then right. so yeah. anytime one of the uh, uh, scientists were sort of done with their experiment or, or the lead scientists would allow the 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 uh the the support staff to go have fun yeah. they would they would you know they took the other parabolas that uh, were left. it so should have been the bridge crew of voyager it really <laughs> all together is. in zero g oh the my gosh that yeah. oh my god uh, that would have been amazing but i gotta be honest with you this is this is a bucket list thing that everyone should try because there's no way to ex to explain to anyone the feeling of zero g is just it's tremendous it really is yeah. you, you feel you feel like you're a superhero in a way you're like oh i'm floating right now <laughs> i'm levitating yeah it's so a, it's, like it's a way of flying isn't it yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, you could, um, Beltran could probably get his uh, warp particles as well with the, the yeah. 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 Warp, yes, particles. warp particles. Warp particles. We, we know NASA's planning to ditch the ISS uh, in a, uh, two, three years, or is it four years, something like that? 20, okay. 20, Quite soon. 20, yeah. 20, 23 or 24, is it? Well, I, I think it's 23. Or it's 25. Yeah, one of those two. Yeah. Is it budget budgetary concerns? Is this the I issue? No, it's, it's just past its... Uh, yeah. Uh, it was it was planned for like, I forget what it was, like 10 years or whatever it was. And it's gone for like 15 to 20 nearly. So it's it's basically falling to bits, basically. So oh. they, they have to uh, retire it. So they'll they'll crush it. But my question is, if they were going to... I said it, I said it's falling to bits. I forget I said that bit. Um, if they offered you a chance to go and visit the ISS, would you, would you take it? Yes. <laughs> Think about it. Don't, don't rush in there with an answer. <laughs> I would. I would. I think that would be a, an amazing experience because I would be. It, it would be more because I over, I've already experienced what zero G is like for that quick, however many seconds it is that I get the twenty seconds and then, and then to have to have to lose that feeling is is a bummer. So to be able to be in that space. feeling all the time, yeah. Proper space. Could you cool. do that test where they have you like sitting on that thing that just spins you really, really fast? Because that's one of the tests. Yeah, it's like the centrifuge sort of thing, isn't it? The um, lie down, I, the I, spin, yeah. silly speeds. Yeah, I would. <laughs> silly speeds. Yeah. Silly would, speed. That's what it is. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I'd, uh, yeah. If they have to put me through that test, I'd, I'd do the test, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah, I know you're laughing yeah. at me. So you'd have to do it if you got the, the opportunity, wouldn't you? Yeah. Again, it's another thing like zero G. It's the once in a lifetime thing and seeing the earth yeah. from space. Did you guys watch Shatner go up in his uh, yeah. the Blue Origin? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I messaged him like right before you. I was like, hey, <laughs> I go better watch your back in case the Klingons show up. And I said something along, along those lines. He, he goes, oh, he goes like, no, I'll be fine. It'll be okay. So he was kind of joking around, but I was nervous. <laughs> I was nervous for him. I kept oh, thinking, yeah. oh my gosh. Because he's not a young spring chicken, no. you know? So <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's an older gentleman now. No, when he walked up the stairs and he was taking his sweet time, I thought, oh, he's already out of breath right now. Walking up those stairs, he hasn't even entered yeah. into the capsule yet. So I was a little nervous, but. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a high insurance rate, that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd like to do it, but I just don't think, I don't know what kind of training you'd need to do to go up there for a, an extended period of time. Yeah, of course. You'd have to be yeah. physically fit because obviously- You'd have to do some fitness training, yeah. Well, yeah, you'd, you'd have to. It's, everything inside is also floating as well, technically. So you've got to be yeah. fit and healthy. I just don't know, have the astronauts ever talked about how they do their business? I mean, like if you go yeah. to the, the yeah. washroom, <laughs> In I'm zero sure. G, are you just kind of parking your butt into it, like up to a wall that just, whoop, just sucks it right up? I mean, what, how does this, I, I have no clue in zero G how they're using, you know, There's number one and number two. I don't. Canadian astronaut, um, Hatfield. Does he talk about it? Like, does he talk he about talks it? about it. Okay, yeah. I think Tim Peake's talked about it as well. He's a British astronaut. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm sure they've talked about it. Um, yeah. It's the, the poop question, I think they get. Yeah, them. and the pee. It gets, the pee, like, the pee and poop the pee. question. Yeah, it like gets vacuumed into like a, a bag. So it, oh. And then it gets put into <laughs> Doesn't like. Doesn't sound pleasant. Doesn't yeah, sound pleasant at all. It gets put into all. like a airtight container after. And then they cook it and eat it. No, I no, I, no, I just, no. I just They probably I, do recycle I, it, actually. I think they have to, right? I think yeah. they recycle the urine, actually. Just while oh, my God. It just gets filled. Sort of like. Big, big grin. It, yeah. It's like a Fremen desert suit from Dune, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They recycle the go, urine. Then? <laughs> <laughs> I think the uh, the funniest thing I've seen up on the ISS, I don't know if you saw it a little while back, there was a clip on YouTube and it's been on social media doing the rounds. And it reminded me, she mentioned Tim Peake, the British astronaut. And he's up there with, I think there's a, a Russian and cosmonaut and there's an American and somebody else. And the American decides for a laugh, he sneaked this gorilla costume up to the ISS. <laughs> I saw that. And uh, yeah, while um, obviously they're uh, busy, he sticks, it, he sticks it on and then goes chasing, comes out behind these <laughs> things and goes chasing after Tim Peake dressed as the gorilla. Oh my god! I would have freaked out if I was Tim. I would have. Ah! That would have been crazy. Yeah, he did. He did. He did look quite shot when he suddenly flew out. But uh, yeah, I thought that was <laughs> the only cool. one up to that was if you wore a Borg costume and did the same thing, which. Uh... <laughs>
that would be pretty funny. <laughs> These are pointers as well. Good idea, yeah. That would have been <laughs> funny. And it's amazing, a lot of the people that work on the ISS, a lot of the time you hear them talking about Star Trek and how it's inspired them and how it, it got them to go into that line of work, basically. Oh, yeah. And you've got people that are up there doing the Live Long and Prosper and people up there with Star Trek oh. and Klingon T-shirts on. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Star yeah. Trek is, yeah. There's that one female astronaut that there's a photo of her looking at the Earth and she's wearing Janeway's mm-hmm. uniform. Yeah. That's she the Italian. That's yeah, the Italian uh, astronaut, right. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because you only get, I think you only get a small amount of allowance for what you can actually take in personal belongings. Correct. So, yeah. yeah. You can't. You this can't bring a big suitcase, weight, can you? Yeah. Anything that's it, you can't take it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just hand baggage. Just whatever right. whatever will fit in the overhead locker on the yeah. <laughs> going up. <laughs> well. This has been absolutely lovely, guys. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, spending your time, especially after you just rushed all the way back over to LA, Garrett. Yes. Uh, uh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I, honestly, I had completely forgotten about this. Um, <laughs> Dude, even though I told her like that and I, She told me, and I had my original flight was at 9.30 so I, uh, on American uh, Airlines, so I canceled that because uh, it, it would have landed at... Yeah, so I think I had lost. I think I lost those funds for that ticket entirely. So oh, I bought man. another ticket to just come in at six in the morning to land at uh, at eight like and eight. Get, get here oh, in time. Wow. So I'm yeah. glad you told me that right at the end. I'd have felt guilty through the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, oh. we would. We would, wouldn't we? No, I tell you at the end so that yes, a that you would not feel guilty through, through the entire um, podcast, but. I also tell you at the end, so you know the commitment that I have. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. I would be on Geeky Guys yeah, and not fantastic. let you down. Yeah. And it's good he told me last night, because if he didn't tell me that his flight, like, because I asked him, I was like, I thought you were driving. Yeah, because yeah, initially I was going to drive. I was going to drive uh, from Vegas back to LA, but I was so tired. And I said, I said, you know what? I just booked a flight for tomorrow morning, one way. Um, it's at, and she goes, when I said, uh, it leaves at, uh, it lands at 10 30. She goes, no, you're, ha- you have something at 10 AM. Remember? And I was like, oh <laughs> no. So the, the, or the quickest one I could find was 6 50 AM departure landing at 8 AM. Wow. And, uh, I did that one and, and here we are. So it's all yeah. okay. amazing. It worked. Amazing. It worked. Yeah. We, we really fun. appreciate it. That's you're welcome, uh, fantastic. Guys. And obviously yeah. you're still, uh, you're still midway through Delta flyers, uh, Yes. Now, uh, quite a well, we're past. We're past the Young, midway point now. Season five. Yeah, oh, we're, in, sure we're in series five, right? Series now, five. So, yeah. Yes. Series five. Thank you. Uh, series five at the moment. Yes. Uh, still plenty right. more to go, and, uh, and 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 something to look forward to afterwards, which we'll find out about in due time. Yes. In due course. Yes. Due it's going to be our Picard announcement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we've got so to make, make sure, sure we're both make sure, Mr. P, one. you're not taking a picture with a tribble when I make the <laughs> announcement of what yeah. happens. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I will. I will. Um, do not do that. I will tweet that picture to you as soon as we finish. I it. can't wait to see it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and for anyone listening that wants to uh, listen to them, uh, you can find out more about the Delta Flyers at thedeltaflyers.org, or you can go to their Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the Delta Flyers. Thank you. And of course, they're on all over social media. Yeah, yeah. 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 Twitter. uh, We have Instagram, Facebook. We have Discord. Discord. Two Facebook accounts. Exactly. I mean, we're all over the place. Uh, So, yes, you can find us. And as we said earlier, not just podcast either, you've done some merch as well. uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see it on uh, deltaflyers.org, all our cool little merch that we have. We have the Yes Ma'am shirt for Tom Paris. We have (laughs) ChronoWorks shirt from a few Future Zen, Future which Zen. Is very popular, yeah. I quite like the baseball cap, I have to say, that I saw on there earlier when I looked. Yeah, you should get the cap. The cap's fun. Yeah, that, that might be a, a future purchase. Yeah, um, thank you, guys. We but, appreciate uh, it. Yes, thank you very much. And, uh, well, we'll hope to speak to you quite soon as well. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, and don't uh, we do usually photo. say it uh, at this point as well, don't we, that if you've got anything that you want to promote that you've got coming up, or any cause or anything you want to raise awareness of or anything like that, we're, we're quite happy for you to shoot it here and uh, go through it. Yeah, Megan, do you have anything that you wanted to say? Or? Uh, well, cause-wise, like the two that are dear to me, I guess would be Care for Wilds, which is an African organization that takes care of orphaned rhinoceroses. Mm-hmm. Um, they're absolutely amazing. And then any care care for wild. 
wild. Right? Yeah. Okay. W I L D. Um, and based then, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, any Ukrainian charities that yes. people can donate to where funds go straight mm -hmm. to help the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Because everywhere, like I'm sure people are listening to this all over. So, whatever charity organization that you guys can donate to where you are, um, I think that would be important too. Cool. Cool. Agreed. Yeah, they're uh, very, 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 very important causes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for me, yeah, I, I'm going to say uh, a second on both of those causes that Megan brought up. I'm also passionate about both of them. Um, by the way, Megan, the um, Ukrainian uh, shirts that I purchased are here. So I'll bring that back to you. Uh, nice. And then, uh, yeah, we have some merch that we bought from some other site that, you know, sort of supports the Ukrainian um, yeah. movement, I guess. And uh, uh, in terms of work, just busy with getting Delta Flyers done, you know, just getting all the Delta Flyers uh, commitments that we have to do um, on a regular, on a weekly basis, getting that done. Mm -hmm. So yeah. More work than what people think. Mm -hmm. And exactly. reopening your other store now that. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, there's another store, have sorry. Moved. Right, our shippers have. Uh, foreverensign.com if you, if you are interested in a amazing um, Captain Proton t-shirt as well as some other really cool merch that are Trek-based foreverensign.com nice yeah and so you can never we'll be that. promoted now what's that you can <laughs> never be promoted now uh, that name <laughs> i know i can't i gotta stay there and, and and at some point we will be able to ship to uk right now we're still working cool. out we got to do that stuff so we'll get around to it at some point i know yeah, people still... have ways around that but yeah if, wait, wait, but a lot of people in the uk are getting their U u.s friends to purchase for them and then ship yeah, it out to them. send it That's over it. Yeah, that works yeah. as well <laughs> yep have you All got right. any uh, convention uh, appearances coming up that uh, um, want to mention? Well, I mean, or? yeah, the big the big one in Vegas in the end of August. Uh, yeah. Dragon, Dragon Con Dragon every Con. year. I'm always at Dragon Con. And then um, there might be some other small ones coming up. You're um, officiating oh, a Capital wedding this week. I am officiating a wedding, yep. And uh, Capital City Comic Con, which is in Vancouver Island. Uh, that's later in the year. Uh, I think it's September, maybe. September. Yeah. So yeah. So August, uh, Vegas, beginning of September, Atlanta for Dragon Con, end of September, um, uh, Vancouver Island, Vancouver. Capital City Comic Con. Cool. So those are my next three. Yeah. Excellent. Well, lovely. All right. uh, and uh, for everyone listening, we're going to be, uh, well, we kind of, uh, series four of our Tea Break podcast is going to be launching in just a couple of weeks. And uh, so this was our sort of celebrity special to sort of launch that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so um, uh, the exact date we'll put out on social media within the next week, I think, Dave. Yeah, but we're uh, <clears throat> we've got uh, everything planned out, and we're uh, about ready to go with that, aren't we? We're about cool. ready to go. About ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, once again, thanks uh, for coming on, guys. Uh, thanks you guys for listening, and thank uh, you. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.